Okay, continuing where we left off. So let's actually, uh... Oh wait, we already did create our... Oh yeah, we already did create our object. So how do we go about accessing them? Well, in order to access these um, member variables, we're going to have to create what are called accessor methods, or accessor functions. So, so let's create our accessor, accessor functions now, or methods, whatever you want to call them. Whoops. There we go. And basically all we're going to do is return each one of these individually. So you could make an accessor function that returns all three of them, but that might not work out well, and you'll see why. Okay, so basically let's make them public. And since we will be returning something, we can't make them void, so we have to use the data type. So we'll have a st private string, and well, pretty much right there it tells you why you can't really use all three, because you can't return all three. So, okay, so public string, uh, and for the accessors, we usually call them get something, because we're actually getting them, right? So let's call it get name, since we're going to be re retrieving the name. And there's no parameters. All we do is return new name. So there we go. So as you can see, we use one of these constructors to set new name equal to either an empty string or set new name equal to a parameter. And then we can call this get name accessor function in order to return it. So that's all it really does. So we're going to make two more. Public gets heights. And all we're going to do there, oh, whoops. Int. There we go. Tab. So we're going to return new heights. And then we're going to have. Oh, public, excuse me, because we're going to have to be able to access these. Public double gets weights. And then we're going to return new weights. So let's figure out how we actually use these. Okay, so let's go back into our form one dot C sharp stuff. So we made our so we made our patient and let's use the default constructor first so let's not pass anything so we'll we'll use this information but we won't pass anything actually let's not use them at all so I'll just comment them out and let's create a message box dot show and let's type in name colon and then put a plus then let's uh, put in the name of patient one so in order to get the patient's name or basically in order to access any of the any of these functions that are or any of the functions or variables that are public so as you can see we can't access any of these variables because they're all privates but in order to access any any uh, variables or functions that are uh, public uh, we will have to type in the name of the object first so we type the object's name so patient one dot then you'll see them all here. So we have get height, get name, and get weight. And you'd see the variables there too if they were public. So let's throw get name with our empty parameters. Plus environment dot new line plus then we'll throw in because we want to go to the next line. So name uh, heights colon and let's see here. So we want to go patient dot get height is that right there we go plus environment dot new line and then we we'll want to go wait so all we're going to be doing is retrieving the information that we typed in that's all we're doing with this but we will do some calculations don't worry don't worry viewers okay so let's run this application Okay, so it loaded properly. We have text and name, text height, and text weight. So since I uh, com the reason why I commented these out is so I don't have to type something in. If I did, if I didn't comment these out, then I would get an error if I didn't type something in. I'm too lazy to. So I click show. We get an empty name, uh, no height, and no weight. So they're both equal to zero because that's what we put in for the default constructor. Now, in order to use our overloaded constructor. Um, let's put these in, and for our patient one, let's toss in the name, height, and weight. So we have the name, height, and weight. I click save, 
and if I run the application, let's type in my name, Adam, what's your height in inches, this is a 70, and for the weight, about 135, something like that, I'm pretty slim. And there we go. So as you can see, we used, so patient one, we passed those in as the parameters into our default constructor to set those member variables equal to what we typed into these text boxes, and then we retrieved those member variables using all of our accessor functions here. So we have name Adam, height 70 inches, and weight 135 pounds. So there we go. So that's really, really cool. So I'm really excited that we're this far into classes now, so I hope this is all making sense so far. Now, what if you would like to change what values you have there, or maybe you didn't put anything in here at all and you used your, and you used the default constructor. So what you, we can do is use uh, mutator functions. So we have our three accessor functions. Now let's make three mutator functions. Now all these mutator functions will do is pass in, so they, are they will take in a parameter and then set whatever uh, member variable that we'll be using equal to that parameter. So basically it's going to do what this overload constructor is doing, but only one at a time. It's only going to deal with one variable at a time. So first we're going to want to do uh, set name. So we'll put in public. And since we're not going to actually be returning anything, we can just put void, then set name. And we're going to be passing in string name. And let's see here. There we go. And we're going to put new name is equal to name. So as you can see, the only difference between an accessor and a mutator function is the accessor function returns a value, so you need a data type right here. Mutators don't, so they have void, but mutators also have parameters and accessors don't. Now you could, it depends how you're using these that you could always that it could always change, but Typically, this is how your accessor functions will be laid out, and this is how your mutator functions will be laid out. So let's create three more for the others, shall we? Public void, set height. So we're going to go int, um, whoops, height. And then we'll type in new height is equal to height. And we need one more. So public void sets. Uh, set what are we setting here? Weight, and we're tossing double weight, and we'll go new weight is equal to weight. Okay, so now we have our three mutator functions in adjunct to our three accessor functions. So let's see how we actually can use these mutator functions. So it should be pretty obvious how we use them. All you'll do is use the set, um, set name, set height, or set weight and pass in some sort of parameter into it. So let's go back to our form here. So let's go down here and... You know what? I'm gonna paste these back in there and I'm actually gonna create a new object down here, shall we? So I'll go BMI patient 2 is equal to new BMI and for this one I'll use the default constructor then I'll use all the sets in here so I'll go patient two dot set uh, name I should do set name and uh, I could just put in a variable I should be putting in a variable because you should never just put in a direct string or direct a number but um, because I'm short on time and you know what I'm doing so um, typically you'll put in a variable, that, but let's just directly put in a, a name, a string. So I'll go John. Then I'll go patient2 again, dot set uh, height. So what should his height be? Let's say he's, I don't know, 6'1", which is what, 73? And patient2 dot set weight. And that's a double, so let's actually put in a double. So let's put in 175.5, something like that. So that's a pretty good weight for 6.1. Uh, okay, so basically um, all, you, all we're doing here is for patient 2, we're going to be using the default constructor to set those member variables equal to null for that second um, object. And we're going to be setting all of them individually. So we could just return them all blank, 
but why return a blank when we can just set them individually? So let's copy this guy up here. So copy, paste, and let's change these to patient twos now. So we have patient two, patient two, and patient two. So notice that even though we're using our um, our mutator functions, we still need to use our accessor functions in order to retrieve that information. So I'll click save and let's run this. So I'll throw in like Bob, say he's, I don't know, 5'6 and uh, I don't know, 125.7 pounds, something like that. So there's our Bob, Bob 60, 66 inches, 125 pounds. Click OK. And now we get all of John's information. John, um, he's 73 inches tall, 175.5 pounds. So there we go. We were able to use our uh, mutator functions. So the last thing I'd like to show you is to, uh, to um, the fact that you can put additional functions in here. So I'm running out of little, little time. So this last one I'd like to create is called BMI, but I didn't write down how to calculate BMI. So I'm going to stop this video right now and come back with that information. Hello, and now we're going to be continuing. So I got the formula. Okay, so in this function, I have a question when we're calculating the BMI. Are we going to be returning anything? Yes, we will be. We'll be returning the BMI, of course, right? So this will not be a, uh, this will not be a void function. So let's type out public again. And the BMI will be a double, of course. And will we have to pass anything as parameters? Do you think we're going to have to pass the weight and height in as parameters? No, we don't have to do that. And the reason is we have our member variables right here. How convenient, right? So we can call this um, calculate BMI. Whoops, BMI. And we don't have to put anything in as parameters because we have all of our member variables right here. So all we have to do is we could just create a new variable in here but remember more the more variables you create the more memory you're taking up so we could just return directly the BMI and the formula for this is your weight in pounds so first let's type in new weights times 703 so the numerator is weight is your weight times 703 divided by your height squared. So basically just new height times new height. There we go. So that's going to return your BMI. So let's go back over here and let's actually get rid of, no I want to keep all the, I don't want to keep this guy. So let's go, let's make a comment block back here. So, um, so am I going to, there we go. So we're just messing with this guy. So then we'll throw in a plus environment dot new line plus, and then let's go body mass index, which is what BMI stands for. So we'll throw in patient one dot, then we should have our BMI thingamajigger. Calculate BMI, there it is. So I'll click save, and let's run this. Let's see what my BMI is. So my name is Adam, whoops, you know, 510. So where's my 70? There it is and 135. So I click show and my BMI is 19.3 which I think is within the bounds for okay because I think if you're at least like 18.5 or something like that you're okay you're not underweight. So there you go so you can calculate BMI that way. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Okay I realized I had enough time so I want to show you one quick thing uh, before I'm done which is uh, very important for you to see so I'm gonna take out these comments so see how we created patient 2 here and we set all those member variables to these different values well, let's set all these back to patient 1 so theoretically we should never see patient 2's data so what do you think will happen so I'll click save and press F5 and I throw in you know Adam let's throw in that other information Bob 66 let's see how good I am at estimating people's BMI. 20.2 or 20.3 that's actually not too bad. So if I click OK again do you think we're now going to see uh, John's information because we set all those member variables to a different value? Let's see. 
No, we got Bob's information again, except for the BMI, because we didn't put BMI down there. So that's one thing to put in, uh, into consideration. When you set those member variables for a specific object, they'll only, those, ver those uh, values will only stick to that one object, not to the other object. So patient twos were created, but we didn't see them because we're only look at, looking at the member variables for patient one. So very, very convenient. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, and now I'll see you next time.